Diaz Gunners Collective. Back at it, you already know. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Uh. Here goes another one. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I said, what? Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Here goes a motherfucking other one. Bye, 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 bye. Or it is, you can tell by the thunder, they hate the intro. They hate me because they hate me. But I'm going to keep doing what I does, cuz. Because at the same time, in the meantime, in between time, there's a lot of supporters that absolutely love it. For those of you that keep asking questions, who's the intro? It's Brazilian Rhyme by Earth, Wind, and Fire. You already know I'm a big Earth, Wind, and Fire fan. Because it's all about love. And I'm going to keep doing my thing, man, Philip Bailey style. Now, check it out. In a menudo style, in direct fashion, you see the thumbnail, Dubs and Gunner, right? And you guys are not privileged or privy to a lot of the conversations we have behind the scenes. A lot of the war stories, the reminiscing, and the shit that goes on behind the scenes between myself and Dubs. But I thought that for no other reason, man, I should just be straight up and tell you some of the stories we tell. Because I felt that for no other reason, you guys need to know, you know, what was going on through our heads at the time when we were young, when we were incarcerated, on two different sides of California, on two different sides of the... Well, actually, it was on the same side, because I was in the school too, right? But I was a northerner in Southern California. So we both had different paths. They both led us in different directions. But ultimately, man, we ended up as positive individuals trying to spread the good word, you heard? Right? Because we both went down rocky roads. See, everything ain't cool. Everything ain't all men joy. Okay? Sometimes it's rocky road. Sometimes it's just a little bit frivolous in the path. And sometimes, man, you're going to see a lot of things you don't want to see. You're going to do a lot of things you don't want to do. But at the end of the day, man, it's what defines your character as a man. You know, in life, you have to be what you are. You got to deal with what's, what's dealt to you. So I was scared. Sometimes, you know, you don't want that hand that's dealt. Let's go, I, I can't do no with no threes and fours. But so I was scared, you got to put a one in front of them. And now it's 13 and 14. And so I was scared, we know how that story goes. So trip out. Um. Me and Dubs conversate a lot. And the youth authority, I think, is what bonds us together as friends. I think identifying and, and some of the slang words and some of the things that we talked about back in the days or some of the things that we've done, you know, we can correlate. Our conversation always steers there for some reason. It always ends up back in the youth authority um, because we have a common understanding of the get down, of how it really was, of the torture, the anguish, the pain, the struggle that we went through. And it's funny to talk to someone from down south, from Southern California, being from Northern California, because it's, it's exactly the same story, just with a twist. You know, um, two young men growing up in the hoods, impoverished, you know, I'm not going to speak on Dub's family situation. I'll let him do that. But I know as far as my family, single mother home, father in and out of prison. I remember going to them trailer visits in Tehachapi. I remember waiting on my dad at the Corcoran fence for him to get out. I remember a lot of different things that happened in my life, but that didn't steer me in the direction I went. What steered me in the direction I went was all them motherfuckers, gallywag motherfuckers out there on the calles having it, right? Jewelry, money, cars, tortas, right? When I seen this from a distance as a kid looking out of my window with my Nintendo right there on cold because I wasn't playing it, I wanted to be out there in the streets with all the thugs, I wanted to identify as a Norteño. And that's ultimately what I did, right? So I started off on a bad career path. I started off tr trying to prove myself like so many of us do. Now, meanwhile, at the same time, Dubs was doing his thing within his area, you know, getting affiliated with the homeboys he was. When that's all you see, when that's all that's around you, you have a choice. So I'm not going to sit here and say you don't. But more than likely... The pull of the streets. And man, that's what that's like. Get over here. It's like Scorpion. Guard. Fuck you. It's just a, it's, it's a steady pull. So anyways, I got pulled to the streets. He got pulled to the streets. And I went to the Youth Authority. The California Youth Authority. CYA, which is no longer in existence, right? And Dubs did the same thing. And some of the conversations that we have and some of the, the ways that they were wiggling in the institution. He was in Fossil. See, I was in Nellis and Preston and Carl Holton. Um, you know, it was a whole different thing going on. Whereas he was from the Southern car, right? Being from down South, you know, they had numbers. Um, whatever struggles they went through, of course, being Mexicano at that time, it was very racial. Um, the makeup of the compas, you know, uh, 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 was a lot of Southerners, but at the same time, man, they had a lot of reglas and a lot of different things that they had to go through as far as being up, being up north and being a northerner going down south, well, South gave us no man's land. We had to do what we had to do. We had to fight, scratch, and claw for everything that we got for our social status of equality, right? Um, but we have conversations. And I asked Dubs, I said, man, how was it impossible? 
What was the get down? And he says, look, let me tell you a story about the northerners pulling up. And I said, okay, okay. So here's a, here's a conversation that we've had. And, you know, and the way I really feel while he's telling the story, because it's a trip. So he's like, hey, when you bought those, he always says, you bought those. When you bought this first new video, when you bought those first pulled up, you know, we were waiting. And I understand that. I understand the situation because I went through the same thing, whereas they were waiting for us in Nellis. You know, one thing about the cops, the GSs, the YCs, what they were called in the Youth Authority, is that they'll absolutely let your enemy know when the opposition's pulling up. There was no sneak attacks. There was no just pulling up and no one knows who you are. It's like, you can get your first one off, get off where you're mad at. There was no none of that. The, everybody in the whole fucking institution on that Copa knew the Northerners were going to land. Okay? And I never took into consideration the Southerners from down south had to go through absolutely the same thing when they went up north. Now, you got to understand in 92, 93, 91, when they were sending Northerners to these institutions down south, this was the first time ever. I mean, they've shot one or two every once in a great while. He got blacked out real fast, got his whole shit cracked open, and then they shipped him back out. But this was the first time they were going to integrate. This was the first integration of California as far as the youth down south. Now, up north, it had been being done. And I never took that into account when Dubs is telling his stories. So anyways, he's like, hey, when they first bought you, brought you bottles, we were waiting on you. Oh, we were waiting on you with weaponry. We were waiting on you with ill intentions. They wanted to catch a body. They wanted to do bad things to us. Um, and so anyways, a group of Northerners did pull up to Paso Robles, right? That was the first institution down south that the Northerners did pull up to. And they got off. First night, man, North and South rocked. They were rocking. They were rolling. Right? Oh, they were rolling. Um, you know, it was what it was. It was a melee. Um, everyone seen it coming. Everyone knew it was coming. Like I said, the placas let them know, hey, Norteños are coming. And I guess from what he told me, and this is personal conversation, but, you know, it's righteous. From what he said is that the placas told him, look, we know you guys are going to do what you got to do. Shit, science can't just don't do it right here. I don't want to do no paperwork. Handle your business, right? Just don't fucking kill nobody. Um, and these vaults were going to do their thing. So anyways, Northerners pull up. I guess they pulled up in the evening. Southerners seen them. They wanted to jump fences, do all kinds of crazy shit. Ultimately, man, the compa that they did go to, it went down. It went off. And that's how it was, man, back in the days. There was no ifs, if, ands, and buts if it was going to go off. The only thing was if we were going to get a chance to really scrape someone, when and how. And that was it. There was no if it's going to happen. Mm -mm. You know, if we're going to catch a body. That was going to go down. So... Um, anyways, they got off and I guess what they decided to do administration was separate, segregate. And that's usually what happens, man. When you're short in numbers and you're that one group, like the Pedro Chapters, the Bulldogs, um, that are shorter in numbers, what they're going to do is segregate you. Doesn't mean you're punks or PC'd up or scared. It just means administration is tired of dealing with the bullshit and they're going to separate you. So that way you do your own program. And I guess they got, the Northerners got put on a compa that was I'm not sure he knows the fucking Copa. I don't know the, the exact name of it. I was never in Paso. But they got put on a Copa that was separate. It was a 270 design building. And that's where they functioned. Now, there were Southerners there, but the Baltos that were there were considered Leva or considered Baltos that didn't know how to function right, right? They weren't with the program. They weren't Firme Raza, which is a word that was given down south to Baltos that were, you know, basically active and with the business, they were Firme. Um, so that's how these Vatos programmed. They separated them in school. They separated them in church. They got their Catholicism on, on the late night. They sent the Northerners to church at night. They sent them to school at night. Um, and that's the way the administration played it out. They tried something and it miserably failed. Okay. Because of the tension between North and South. Mexicanos, Chicanos look the same, bald like a motherfucker, right? Doing their thing. But at the end of the day, they felt some type of way. Let me strap my shit back on. Okay, because you know what I mean? I got a complex. To the side, to the left, to the left, or is it to the right? One never knows does one. All I know is that's how it went down. Meanwhile, on the other side of the land in LA, right? A little skinny, pimply faced, ugly motherfucker, you see the thumbnail, pulls up. And I'm scared, homie. I don't know what's going to happen to me, right? All I know is Vatos don't like me, and I don't like them, right? Not because they did anything to me, because I just did it, right? That's the way I was laced. Those were the enemies. Those were the opposition. That It was going down. So anyways, I've told my stories before. I went through the motions. I did my thug this. I did what I had to do um, to live, okay, to breathe. You know, it wasn't to impress or to act cool. So I was just trying to breathe a little. Can I get some oxygen? 
I said, can I get some oxygen? That's what I was trying to do. So I'm doing my thing, homes, and um, slowly but surely, Dubs is doing his. Now we know Dubs' story, he gets out, ultimately picks up a case, a murder case, and goes to prison. Meanwhile, I'm, st I'm younger, so I'm still in YA, fighting that good fight, fighting for the North Daniel cause. And then I get out, of course. And when I get out, I go back to the Vauder, to the neighborhood, and I immediately get involved in a lot of the fucking ranger games and a lot of the things that are going on within the hood. I start politicking in the hood. I start spreading that Norteño gospel, Billy Graham style, right? I start doing what I have to do or what I feel I have to do at the time. I was a knucklehead. I was a youngster. I was confused. I was conflicted with myself. I didn't care about my family. Didn't care about the, yeah, I cared a little bit about a torta. She was all right, right? But there was a lot of things I didn't give a fuck about. All I cared about was the Norteño cause, my people, my gente, and, and I struggled, right? Um, and the struggle continued, believe me. So now you have Dubs over there going to prison. Myself, I'm going to fucking prison. And ultimately, man, our lives cross paths over this YouTube shit. And we become friends. There's a bond there. A YA baby bond. Now, when I first heard the term YA baby, I remember my homeboy Poste had just got out. And he was like, man, I'm about that shit, homie. I'm about that business. I'm a motherfucking YA baby. And I said, YA baby? Says, can't wipe your ass. You need a new diaper, right? Because you got fucking got guys. <sighs> I could smell it, right? And um, I absolutely knew what he was talking about, but I just never heard it put into those words. So I started saying, well, I'm a white baby too. It's the fact I'm an older white baby than you. I got my babyization on, see, I was, you know, and we argued over who put in more work and we argued over who threw who over the chair and we argued over who fucking stabbed who and uh, ultimately he won, right? <laughs> I'm gonna be real, I can't lie. But I did my thing, you know, I have my war stories to tell. You know, I know a lot of people like to downplay it, but Sasuke, hey, at the end of the day, I don't have to look myself in the mirror and know they do. So I do my thing, right? Dubs is doing his thing. Um, and we start to conversate. Somewhere along the line, we get in conversation. We start to conversate. And I start telling him stories. And he starts telling me stories. So anyways, when he tells me about the Northerners pulling up, I can see him reverting back to his old stilo. I can see him being like, yeah, see, we did that. I thought they had to separate you about this, right? I'm like, what are you know what I mean? I feel like it's just a story between two men, but it's two men who, although they lived the same lifestyle, we come from two different clechas, two different classes. We come from two different idealisms, two different uh, 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 rundowns, you know? The only reason I'm privy to know anything about the Southerners, period, other than they were the opposition, was that I sat down down south for a few years and I studied them. I watched things. I gravitated towards that stilo. No, I didn't want to be a Sereno or a Southerner or none of that. That was never in the, in, that was never brought up. But what was, was the stilo, the Mexicano flavor, the Chicano, the Choloism, the, the way motherfuckers got, the Cholissimo, the way motherfuckers got down. I seen it. And I said, okay, that's the way we're supposed to function as Mexicanos. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing. And this might make people mad. But this, Dubs tells me the same stories. It was very racial in the youth authority, okay? The number one opposition, of course, was North and South, if you were in an institution where there was that. But also what there was even more so was black and Mexicans. Oh yes, yes indeed. You know, I'm not gonna downplay the blacks contribution to this gang banging, cause they were really in there doing it. Motherfuckers from six O's, A-Trey Gangster Crips, you know, Tree Tops, Brims, Santana Block. You know, I met, I met Crips and Bloods and all kinds of people from everywhere. And I'm going to tell you right now, them from town Pyrus is about the business, right? And I noticed everything. And I'm going to tell you right now, although the Crips were deeper than everyone, especially the LA Crips, and they were about them activities, man, them sangres, oh, Pyru, were on Pyru, man. They were about that. You know, there was a lot of conflict between Mexicans and blacks. And I hate to say that, but that's a lot of the shit that we went through. Now, being from up north in Northern California, it was more... Um, I don't know, we adapted to each other's styles. You know, Northerners grew up with a lot of blacks, but then the Southerners grew up with a lot of blacks too. So I don't see the difference. The only difference was we had common enemies. So we kind of gravitated towards, I said, okay, I'll get your bank, you got my bank, I got your bank. You don't got mine? You're like, well, fuck you then, right? And that's just how it was. You know, according to Dubs and them, they were getting into Plato with the blacks all the time. You know, like I said, the Northerners were kept separate. So all they had as an enemy was the blacks. So there was a lot that went on between them. You know, I'm going to tell you guys a story about how we got off with the blacks in Carl Holton. Now, when I got to Carl Holton in Northern California, 
wasn't much going on. Bunch of programmers, bunch of authors that have been to other institutions that finally came together and decided, fuck that, and so we just want to spread, get visitas and go home. And that's what was going on there. there I mean, there was one-on-one -on -one fights and motherfuckers would take fades in the cells and do their thing. But for the most part, 99% of the fucking time, it was just peacetime. Everybody was on a soft defensive stand. No one was tripping. Um, and I was on a compa called Mono Hall. Now, Mono had a lot of Jake cats and crazy motherfuckers. I remember I wanted to get off Mono Hall bad, and ultimately I did go to Tioga. And I'm going to tell a story later on today in a double up about an individual I ran into in Tioga who's been talking a lot about me. And I think he's mad because I stopped answering his phone calls. But we're going to get to that. And if he says, oh, no, I never talked to that fool. I never called that fool. Well, then I guess I just have to show the receipts, right? I guess I just have to show the text messages and all that. Pensa la tira. The wind's blowing. But there's a guy out here in YouTube Landia that's mad at me um, because ultimately I wouldn't put him in contact with someone and I stopped answering his phone calls um, because I was busy, eh? For no other reason. Didn't hate the guy. Rather liked him. But now since he's talking all the shit, I, I know he's just trying to blow his channel up and, and build on it. But uh, 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 we're going to get to it later on. Anyway, so I'm on Mono, gang of J-Cats. Well, they started to ship a lot of the Norteños off of Mono for no other reason than they could, right? Um, and guys were going wherever they were going. And so what they started to do was bring a lot of, a lot of blacks, right? And at first it was like, okay, one or two cribs, a blood, you know, a 415. At that time they weren't saying 415. I mean, they were, it was 415, but they wasn't saying Kumi or hollering, nothing like that. It was just a brother from the Bay. Um, and in this place, all the blacks stuck together because there wasn't very many, right? But they started to bring them. So I was like, here's two. Shit, that's three more. Utterly, is that a five piece extra crispy with a side order of sucker sauce? They was bringing them. They got that sweet heat, right? They was bringing all kinds of brothers. And what happens? And I'm going to tell you, no sugar coating, man. I got love for black and brown. But real life, all these brothers that they were bringing were starting to get a little loud, a little boisterous, a little crazy. They thought they were running shit. Now, all of a sudden, the TV is on Soul Train Daily, right? Now, all of a sudden, motherfuckers is hollering in the chow hall talking about, you know, damn, are we tired of having Mexican food and all this, right? And I was like, okay, okay. I knew it. I knew it was about to go down. Well, this blood came from, well, he wasn't a blood. I don't know what the fuck he was. He ended up becoming a blood, but he was from Stockton, right? Dark motherfucker, man. You know what I mean? Michael Blackson. That about the moon walked in. And when he came in, he Michael Jack. Um, I didn't like him from the gate. It wasn't because he was a brother in black. Man, I had a lot of black homeboys. I had black Norteño homeboys at the time. It was because the way he just was in there like, man, I'm going to do what the fuck I want to do. And you guys ain't got nothing coming, right? And he started trying to punk people. He was, man, them white boys. Woods, brother, I'm here to tell you. You guys were coming up short on that, compa, right? He was punking people, taking their canteen, their commissary. Um, just a whole lot of riffraff stuff, man, that I didn't approve of. I didn't like, you know? Um, so we started to get together, the homeboys and the Southsiders. And we started to conversate. Because over there, we used to have a lot of conversations between each other. There was about, about 20 Northerners on that, compa, maybe about six or seven Southsiders, a few Bulldogs, right? So we all started to conversate. Like, hey, man, these brothers is getting a little deep. Now, I'd only had this conversation before in Nellis when the Southsiders had come up to us. And we were going to get off with the blacks, man. It was crazy, right? I mean, ultimately, it never happened. Thank God, right? Because, man, that would have been an ugly situation all the way around. Um, but we were feeling some type of way, man. We were feeling some type of way. So this is what happened. So the Bulldogs stepped back. They said, hey, we ain't really tripping off the blacks, man. That's your guys' business. If you guys want to do something, do something, right? So there was two Southsiders. One name was Ducky, was from San Diego. And another one, shit, what was his name, man? I forget his name, Holmes, but he was from uh, Rebel Stresse, right? There was two Vatos from Rebel Stresse there. One I would ultimately meet later on. His name was Boxer, rest in peace, from Rebel, Rebel Stresse. But this Vato, I forget his name, but he was from Rebels as well. Um, and what happened was the Blacks, this one particular dude, we were like, we weren't tripping off all the brothers, but they started to rock with them. Of course, he's Black. They're going to rock with them, right? So what we did was we decided to extract him away from the situation. We were going to sacrifice some henty and get off. And let me tell you, man, we were on the way to chow. And so the way it used to work was there was two different compas and a chow hall was in the middle. So when I say on the way to chow, you didn't have to walk nowhere. You went and sat in the day room and then they released each line and then you, you went in. Got your chow, sat down, ate. They did more people. So there was people coming in and people coming out. Well, he always sat in the front, starving ass motherfucker, right? He was hungry. He was hoping that he could run in, get food, come back, get the double up, and go back in. Motherfuckers was slick about that shit. The double up never hurt nobody, right? Guard! You know about the double up? So he was trying to get that double on the hamburger. It was a hamburger day, right? He was going to get his hamburger on, right? Looking like Grimace. He was a bigger guy. So as he sits in the front, we already had a plan. 
a lot of the north and south sat in the middle. There was four hitters, basically, right? We weren't going to stab them. We were just going to beat them up, extract them away from the compa. We didn't want them there no more, no more, right? He was, he was causing tension, problems. And this is how it happened and why. Usually, one gets off, everyone gets off. You know, one jump, all jump was the fucking thing. So you couldn't just beat up on someone and jump someone. Everyone's going to jump in. Um, we, but we knew that the blacks kind of knew what time it was with this guy. Like, they were cool with them, but at the same time, they were like, get that motherfucker out of here. And we were, believe me. So what happened was this guy goes through the line, and as he comes out, you know, people get up to go in. That's when the blackers are not paying attention. They're more concerned with what's going on in the chow hall. And we rushed. Boom, boom, boom. One brother jumped in, man. He was a crip. He was from Sacramento, from Garden Block. He jumped in and got his issue, right? Doom, doom, doom. I was like, oh, hell no, nah, right? Um, but ultimately what happened is yard, I mean, you know, down, down. They pulled the pin. Cops came. They took me to Yuba Hall, which was the oil. They took two Southsiders to Yuba Hall. They took Mama Shorty from Salas to Yuba Hall. And they took this black dude to Yuba Hall. Of course, man, I'm going to be real. You guys want me to be real? The vault was like, the two North Angels and the two Southsiders did it. Oh, my. Right? Um, we joined forces and blackouted him. And uh, they ended up letting us go back to the compa. And he stood there. And he ended up getting shipped out. I think he went to DeWitt Nelson, which was a better program than what we were doing. But we, we, we set a goal and we, had, we achieved it. Now, I hate the fact that black and brown had to go to that, but that's just the way it was in the youth authority, man. It was very racial. It was stupid. It was very stupid. Um, and as a grown man now, I realize that. So anyways, back to me and Dubs, right? So every time we conversate, we talk about why stories and how I'd be feeling when he'd be saying some of that shit. Yeah, you vocals were separated and this and that. I feel a little hurt. I'm like, damn, not hurt because of what he's saying, because I know it's truth, man. I know it's truth. And I know the administration fucked off a lot of careers and, and, and what they did, not fucking off careers because it doesn't, why it doesn't count to prison. But what they did is they, they changed a lot of people's ways of thinking. We lost a lot of good soldados and real ones, man, that could have helped, assisted us. Um, you know, they basically tricked them in the mind like, hey, you vatas ain't shit. You vatas are beneath or below. And um, that changed a lot of guys. A lot of guys quit banging. A lot of guys didn't want to be participate anymore. And those of us that were really going through the struggle, struggled, man. Ultimately bad. And that's just it. That was it. So that's how I feel sometimes. I'm like, damn. Man, you're telling the truth, eh? And sometimes when I tell him stories, I'm sure he's telling the same way because I'd be telling him about Nellis, about getting off, about how they almost dropped the whole institution level because Valtas weren't retaliating at one point, and then ultimately they started getting off. Um, it just it just is what it is. It's simply why stories, but it is something that has brought us together as brothers, men, as good friends, because we have a common understanding. And our goal now is we put that in the past. We know about that. We tell our stories. We entertain here on YouTube. They're great stories, you know. But at the end of truth, but at the same time, what we ultimately want to, the point we're trying to get across is you could start from nothing, gravitate through the system as a youth, go to the system as a prisoner, as an adult, man, and come out on the, the other side clean. It's what you make of it. You know, nowadays, shit, we're trying to shine, homie. Nowadays, we're trying to do our thing. You know, we're here on YouTube telling our stories, nothing more, nothing less. I'm not here to disrespect people. I wanted to address something real quick. I dropped a fucking video yesterday talking about paperwork, right? Talking about how if you drop pay, paperwork on people, if you're exposing people the way it is nowadays, man, if something happens to that person as a direct result of that paperwork or you fucking antagonizing or exposing him, you know, you can get caught up. You can get arrested. You can get fucked off. Your career could be over, right? Um, and, I, and I stand on that. Um, but someone mentioned a comment and I wanted to address it fully. They said, Gun, what about this fake ass paperwork you dropped on American Cholo? What about that? I said, first and foremost, I absolutely apologized for that. You know, I was wrong, man. I put that guy in danger, I put his family in danger. Um, I spoke on his name ill and he didn't deserve that. And it wasn't truth, right? Now at the time, did I know it was a lie? Did I know it was fake paperwork? No, I just didn't do my due diligence. I didn't make that shit up. It got sent to me and that's 100% facts, right? And it got told to me that this is what it is. And I jumped the gun and ran with it. Not even thinking of the repercussions it could have on him and his family and his gente. Um, and that was my bad. And I apologize to him right here publicly because if I addressed it publicly, I'll apologize publicly. And I left it at that. So when I spoke on it, people are like, why don't you say this? And why don't you say that? Hey, I did say that I, in the past, I've even been guilty of doing some stupid shit like that, but it's not a good look. And now that I'm growing up and I'm starting to be seasoned and learn through my YouTube mistakes, I understand, gente, that that was a bad look. It wasn't the way to go. And like I said, I apologize. And what more can I fucking do? Thanks, Ken. You want me to unsubscribe to him and then resubscribe again a couple times so that way he's happy? 
No, at the end of the day, man, he's doing what he does. I wish him well in his progression and his prosperity and what he's doing. And I'm going to continue to do me. And that's all I can do. So I hope that addresses the motherfucker that keeps asking me over and over again. What about American children? I don't know. Go tap in. Support him. Homes. He's brown. Go support another brown man doing what he does, cuz. And I'm going to continue to do what I do. With that being said, man, myself and Dubs are considered YA babies, but we consider ourselves grown men now, and we're on a different level. We can show you the way. We can show you how to overcome obstacles and get out of that life, man, and get involved in your familia's life and ultimately get involved in what you want to do, your hopes, dreams, and goals. But you ain't going to do it, man, if you're going to sit on your ass all day watching YouTube talking shit. You got to really get to it. Be on the lookout for a double up. This is one you guys have been waiting for later on. It's finally time for me to address. Uh, uh. It's just something I got to do. With that being said, I hope that you move smooth with a purpose. Get everything that you want coming to you. Remember, at the end of the day, it's all about the struggle, the strive, and the strive, the struggle. We're going to continue to do what we does, because right here on YouTube, man, shout out and respect to the homeboy Dubs. If you haven't tapped into his channel, go trip out on it. Best YouTuber on YouTube to me, man. That's the homie. Bang, bang, thumbs up, thumbs down. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. I'm going to continue to strive and struggle and struggle and strive for Gunners Collective and the Collective Clips. If you don't know, now you do. Go tap in. Bang, bang.